So this is a uh, common thing that people describe about. The issue of vestibular migraine um, is that the symptoms are episodic. And uh, you have these episodes in which you, the way I describe the vestibular system is like you're holding two cups of water of equal length, of equal volume. What happens, and they have to be equal. What happens with vestibular migraine is that it's almost like one of the cups of water is emptied out. So now you're with one cup of water and your body's freaking out for a second. When this happens, you have these things, what we call nystagmus, what Jennifer describes, where you have quick movements of your eye. And that's having to do with something called your vestibular ocular reflex. And this allows us, this, this reflex allows us to read things as we're walking. It allows us to keep our eyes stationary as we're reading things um, as, as we're walking. When you're having a vestibular migraine episode, you lose your ability for your eyes to catch on to these things. And so this is what, this is the things that happens. Uh, so this is a very common thing to have nystagmus and it's very sporadic. And that's the problem why sometimes vestibular uh, therapy can be helpful. Uh, and sometimes it's not helpful because physical therapy, it just strengthens your vestibular system. But when you're having these acute attacks, uh, it's hard to compensate. And that's one of the biggest problems with vestibular migraine and other conditions in which you lose, completely lose one side of your vestibular system, your brain can learn to adapt and it actually becomes no issue in the future. The problem with vestibular migraine is that your vestibular system is fine, but just every once in a while, you lose your ability to have vestibular input from one side. Well, that was a long-winded question, but hopefully that was helpful. All right, another question is from Denise says, uh, I'm feeling faint. I can't stand and talk to people for very long. I get these sudden rushes and feel like I'm all faint. I have vestibular migraine and triple PD. Uh, so that's tough. So vestibular migraine and triple PD usually come together. Feeling faint is uh, is more classic with triple PD. Uh, and uh, it's hard. It's really hard. You know, these conditions, they continue, they coexist together. Sometimes, and uh, my my opinion is that they're all a migraine related condition, but that's a different story itself. Uh, feeling faint is uh, a little bit more rare. Uh, most people just have this uh, acute attacks of room spinning vertigo or just feeling like they're drunk on their feet. Feeling faint can sometimes be other things going on. Most often, if you feel it more often when you stand up from a sitting position, uh, and you feel like you're going to pass out, that could be other stuff going on, something called orthostatic hypotension. All right, Emily says, motion, like in a car, uh, fragrances and barometric pressures have so much uh, to do with it. Uh, yeah, textbook, vestibular migraine. So motion sickness to me is one of the classic symptoms that I ask people. Uh, we all have a baseline motion sickness problem, um, in patients who have vestibular migraine, that threshold for motion sickness is much lower. So classically, almost everyone who has vestibular migraine has a lifelong history of just getting really sick in the back of cars or not being able to tolerate being on um, ships or sailboats or classically, like uh, when you watch one of those crazy movies, um, you're just, your brain has a, a particularly, me included, not just yours, <laughs> is uh, particularly difficulty uh, tolerating uh, complex things and complex visual patterns. Uh, and so this is very, very common. And so the thought is when your symptoms start getting better, this motion sickness and this sensitivity to fragrances and the atmospheric changes, you become less sensitive to it and you're, um, and all your symptoms start getting better and better. And this is actually a key point that I want to focus on is that the dizziness component of vestibular migraine is a big deal. But for many of you guys, uh, you'll start recognizing that there's all these other random stuff going on in your life that are migraine related that you're not recognizing. Like Emily has noticed the, you know, the motion sickness, the fragrance, parabank pressure and stuff like that. But there's so many other things you know, ear fullness, ear pain, neck pain, this intense sensation when you touch your skin, 
these all these symptoms that you know you've been living with that you haven't really that you don't know these weird things happening are often migraine related and they get better as your dizziness gets better so it's like a added bonus <laughs> uh joanne talks about when you think you're cured for months and the vestibular migraine comes back with a bang that's the problem and that's uh, why it's so important to understand the fundamentals and get down to the root causes of vestibular migraine. Um, so uh, you're so below threshold that the odds of these things happening becomes a lot more rare. Uh, Yvette talks about motion sensitivity, sensitivity, visual vertigo, wishing I can get back to drive again, which is something that I love and get disappointed when there's sudden spins when I turn my head. Uh, this is a lot to unpack here. So again, motion sensitivity, again, the common theme people always discuss uh, and are bothered by. Uh, that is very common. Uh, and again, it gets better with treatment. Um, this sudden turning of the head is, is really disorienting for people. And, uh, and oftentimes, I'm glad it gets brought up here because... Um, there's a, the most common cause of dizziness that we have uh, is something called triple PD, uh, where you have loose crystals in your brain uh, or in, not in your brain, in your vestibular system. Uh, and many of you have probably heard of this because you've come across it or you've had this diagnosis. The reason why I bring it up is because there's so many people who come with this diagnosis of triple P, of uh, BPPV. Did I say triple PD? I said BPPV. BPV is a benign proximal uh, positional vertigo when you have loose crystals in your semicircular canals that often get dislodged. And so the classic symptom is having sudden uh, vertigo that happen with sudden movements, classically when you're rolling around in bed or laying flat. The problem is the diagnostic dilemma happens is that vestibular, the reason why I bring that is vestibular migraine also has this really important uh, characteristic that you also get sudden attacks of vertigo when you quickly move your head as well. So for many people, they come in with an incorrect diagnosis or they have BPPV, they get the therapy and they just don't get better. Um, and it turns out they just have vestibular migraine. Um, why did I bring that up? Um, because <laughs> I guess you were talking about sudden spins when you turn your neck. And so that's very common. Again, uh, something to be what happens with treatment and as you get stronger and stronger, you start becoming more confident in your vestibular system. And so people eventually start getting back more comfortable into driving cars. Uh, and cars are especially difficult because there's so much movie stimuli and things like that. Hopefully that was a long, I can, I can go on for hours about each of these questions. I'm trying to cut myself short. Uh, the second thing, uh, the other thing Claire talks about is the unpredictability of, of vestibular migraine, how it affects her daily hours and minutes. That's a big problem. Uh, this unpredictable nature of vestibular migraine to me is the real uh, problem because it's almost like torment because you don't know when it's going to come. It's so uh, unpredictable. You don't know what, you know, you could be having such an amazing time on vacation. All of a sudden it comes out of nowhere. And this to me is what it brings down so many people's mental, you know, reserve and it starts emo emotionally affecting them. Uh, and my thought is if you can understand some of the triggers, understand what's going on, understand the concept of threshold and all these things, um, then, and you give some sense of uh, control of our understanding why you're having each of these episodes, sometimes it's helpful and it helps with some of your, um, the anxiety and the depression and things like that associated with it. Uh, so Claudia, thanks for talking about uh, VM and dizziness because I often wonder if it was, but yes, Claudia is typing about VM and BPPV. Classic, you know, this happens all the time and almost every patient who comes in with vestibular migraine and has that sudden episodes of the, uh, dizziness with position changes, they have come across that from their doctors. Um, Linda talks about the visual auras and feeling dizzy all day. Yep, that's the problem. Uh, so feeling dizzy all day, the, that's a really uh, important concept for me. People say they feel dizzy all the day. And oftentimes what I describe is that 
is it really there's two different people that come in some people describe uh, they think that they're having dizziness all the day but if you really think about your symptoms so the classic thing that happens you actually have an acute attack of room spinning vertigo and that often happens for about an hour or two or even more even a whole day or something like that but what happens is that after that acute attack ends then what happens after you have this terrible feeling of nausea, you know, and just feeling like you're drunk on your feet. And people put everything, all this into one big category. And it's actually, I encourage you to next time you have your episodes and um, dizziness attack to try to take note of your dizziness and take a step back and focus on it. Because most people, you should have an attack of room spinning vertigo followed by a different types of uh, disequilibrium, we call it. And try to take note of how long it takes. Um, there are some people who just feel like they're drunk on their feet all the time. And there's some people who really have room spinning vertigo all the time. And that's just because their attacks are so happening so consistent all the time that they all just run into each other. So take note of that. Uh, Susie talked about balance, nausea, vision. Okay, so again, nausea comes up again. Uh, nausea, nausea to me <laughs> is... One of the most complex, you know, path like physiologic things that we have that happen to our body. And I argue one of the most worst human condition you can have is nausea. And so uh, this is a really uh, unfortunate side effect of any dizziness. And anyone who's had any vestibular migraine knows the feeling of nausea. Um, and so take note of the nausea, uh, note uh, and, and do remember when you get treatment and you start getting better, these symptoms will start getting better as well. All right, Rita has a bit of a long one. Rita talks about when leaning my head back or lying down and my eyes move quickly. I feel like as I'm going to faint, it lasts about five seconds, but it makes me nauseous when I get up and go to the bathroom during the night. I have to wait on the walls and furniture because of balance. Uh, after I'm up for about a few minutes in the morning, well, all is well. I bend my, I bend my head backwards. This has been going on for six weeks with no one telling what to do. I have a new diagnosis from an ENT and following strict diet. Okay. Yeah. Again, uh, this is really cool. Again, so this BPV, BPPV keeps coming up as well. Uh, and um, I've actually published on this in that fact that I'm just bringing this up because everyone keeps talking about BPPV. Um, the P BPPV is the best diagnosis you can have if you have dizziness because uh, there's the crystals can simply get fixed by doing repositioning maneuvers that we have. Now, the problem is <laughs> if you've been diagnosed with BPPV and you're not getting better with the repositioning and the conventional treatments that we have, now this raises the alarm that you might have a migraine process going on. And I've written extensively about this in that the overlap between those who have BPPV and a migraine process is too great of a coincidence. And so the theory is, um, these are all, this is why the stimulant migraine and this, these conditions are so quickly progressing is because we're constantly trying to figure out what's, there's, there's things out there that as researchers, as doctors, we're trying to figure out. The concept is those people who are refractory to the treatments of the, con of the, of the standard, uh, you know, Diggs Hall Pike and Epton maneuvers, that don't get better with time if they if uh, you get a good enough migraine history a lot of the symptoms actually correlate with migraine triggers and some people get better with migraine treatments in itself that's uh that's my thing if anyone else has any other questions let me know uh i'm really um excited to hang out with you and this is my favorite thing to talk about i can talk about it all day every day <laughs> And I uh, hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend. I look forward to hopefully talking to some of you. And that's it. We're going to sign off. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye.